What's up, Pirate fans? It's game week, and what a test it is as the Pirates open up the 2020 season against Central Florida, one of the nation's most explosive teams offensively and one of the best teams in the country uh, that, that, that is around. Central Florida has clearly established itself as, as one of the, if not the premier group of five program in the country, and they continue to validate themselves with a dominating victory over ACC opponent Georgia Tech last weekend in Atlanta. Excited to see what the Pirates can do as we take a look at this offensive and offensive preview for East Carolina as Holt Naylor's and the rest of the Pirate offense tries to get going against an opportunistic but not an overwhelming defensive unit, in my opinion, of Central Florida. For some context of who Central Florida is and who the defense coordinator is, if you're a fan of college football, you should know the name Randy Shannon. Randy Shannon was a player at the University of Miami, ascended it to defensive coordinator and eventually the head coach of the Hurricanes, and really was in charge or at least a position coach on some of their best defenses in, in the program's history, especially during the glory years uh, as a player there in the 80s and the 90s and a coach uh, through the early 2000s. One thing that I think is important to know, though, though – Randy Shannon has cut his teeth in the Miami 4-3 defense. Central Florida is a very multiple uh, team defensively. They show a, a myriad of fronts. They show a myriad of coverages. And what they specialize is probably what has caught my eye more in looking at some of their TV copies from last year and even this year is how much pressure they like to bring in. And when I say pressure, I mean both five-man pressure with a safety in the middle of the field you know, cover one type stuff, meaning man coverage, man free with a safety deep, or just bringing more than you can block, bringing six or seven based on the formation with nobody in the middle of the field. But it remains the same. Central Florida UCF is going to challenge East Carolina's receivers in one-on-ones. Where Georgia Tech was able to take advantage in the game was two things if you go back and you watch saying, number one, the QB read game. I am not sure Georgia Tech actually did enough of this because anytime they, what man coverage allows you to do is it allows you to get an extra hat in the box. And because you have an extra hat in the box, the team that's playing man coverage can now outnumber the team in the box, which means handing the ball off to the running back is really like hitting your brick head on the wall. The way to even out numbers is to add the quarterback as an added dimension in the run game. Is East Carolina willing to do that um, with Ayler as a quarterback this year? And the thing Georgia Tech probably had the most success with that we'll start off with is getting the back involved in the passing game. Now, what I've drawn up is a simple, uh, to start with a uh, straight blitz protection. So I'm actually gonna erase that. A, a straight blitz that they that they might send. And this is the old 4-3, 4-2 gut blitz that everyone that, that bases out of the four out front still runs. Now it's maybe not something Central Florida runs a ton of, but the numbers still equate to where they go. So I've got East Carolina in a basic 11 personnel set with an H back here and three wide receivers. Uh, this would be CJ Johnson out here uh, as the single receiver. So you guys can see what man coverage really allows uh, these guys to do is put a guy in the middle of the field. Let's get a little pin up here. Put a guy in the middle of the field and play man three. Well, what happened on Saturday a ton for Georgia Tech is uh, Central Florida UCF lost sight of this back oftentimes on a variety of routes, whether or not it was the T option route where he would break man to man, whether or not they sent him out on a slip screen or if they sent him up the pipe on an actual pipe route. Why is this a problem to a man pressure team? Well, the problem is this, whenever you bring pressure and you play man coverage, what you tell the guys to the side of the blitz is, basically we're going to eat the back up with the blitz on the inside. So if this back runs an option route inside, he's not going to be able to get out because every gap is covered and it's very cloudy. And what you're teaching defensive players, whether or not it's defensive linemen, linebackers, safety, whoever the interior blitzer is, is that we want to eat the back, okay? We want to eat the back. So if we feel like we're coming on pressure, 
then they're going to hold up and he's going to stop pressure and he's just basically going to stay on him in man or we think the pressure is going to force him to not get out in the route and he's going to be forced to stay in a block. Well, Central Florida, or excuse me, Georgia Tech took a different idea on UCF that they were going to release the back no matter what and use him as a hot route, meaning they knew they couldn't protect everybody on the side of the blitz. So if they saw pressure, they would just dump it out to him and they occasionally got a big gain. The other thing that you're responsible for doing is that if this back releases outside, whether or not he runs the flat route or he runs the player, either one, the outside guy then wants to heal with the back. So either way, if the back goes inside, we want to eat him. If he goes outside, we want to peel with him. If he doesn't get taken, then that quarterback's immediately going to throw the football to the ball. So you can bet your rear end that Central Florida is going to try and do a couple of things to make sure they do a better job of covering the back out of the backfield because they did a very poor job, gave up four explosive plays in the passing game. Donnie Kirkpatrick is going to check their oil with guys coming out of the backfield. Now, let's say this guy is not a blitzer at this time. Well, East Carolina can't release the back all game. Sometimes they're going to have to keep him to stay in and protect. Well, there's where the chess match comes. If you stay in and protect and they're still in man coverage, does Central Florida use some guys out here to maybe play a low hole if their guy doesn't come? and maybe help out on more of the interior, the slants and the RPOs, or do they do what you call add blitz? By add blitz, what I mean is if he's going to hang out, he's got that back, and when he sees him block, well, now he's coming on what you call an add or a green dog, meaning, okay, my guy's not going out for a route. I'm going to get into the pressure. So there is the chess match of how one team will attack the other one in the passing game. Central Florida is going to bring pressure. Does East Carolina have the ability to, A, win the one-on-one -on -one matchups out wide, or, two, be able to get some explosive plays to the inside, to the backs and to the H-backs, whatever, coming out of the backfield because UCF did not do a very good job of handling Georgia Tech out of that. The other thing is the quarterback run game. We mentioned what man coverage allows you to do. Man coverage – absolutely allows you to plus go plus one in the box. So let's put that same formation up here. If Central Florida wants to get into a situation, I'm, I'm not trying to offend Central Florida or UCF by calling them Central Florida. That's what they were when I was in school, so I'm calling them that. UCF, if they want to get into man coverage, they'll get in a situation where they lock up outside on these three guys with the two corners, and the nickel slash Sam linebacker. And then we will insert a safety into the box against the fourth eligible receiver, whether or not that's an H back or if they put another receiver out here, he would be out here. So if you get a six man core, when I say six man core here, I'm talking about the five offensive linemen and the H back, then UCF playing man is going to be able to get a seventh man in the box. So let's say now we move the strong safety, the mic, and the wheel inside. I don't care what the front is, whether or not it's a four down or a three down with the stand up, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is Donnie Kirkpatrick, if they're going to get a ton of man coverage, is going to have to deal with the concept that they've got seven over my six guys that can block. So there's only six blockers that can get there for the back. Well, to equate the numbers, put the other free safety in the middle of the field. To equate the numbers, you've got a very good runner back there in Holt Naylor's who can even things out. So what East Carolina may be able to do is a variety of zone reads, power reads, whatever they are, because when you use the quarterback as a runner, you can read a defender which now equates it to a six-man core against the other six guys. Or I can use this back as a blocker, and now we've created a seven-man core to run the quarterback. So some concepts that he may install, you know, Ehlers obviously is a big guy. You guys remember him. He was primarily used as uh, really
really a lead back that first year where, okay, now we're going to read that defensive end. We're going to run the old Cam Newton power replay where we're going there and we're going to read that defensive end. Okay, now I've equated the numbers right here. That combo is actually going back to that wheel backer. That puller is going back to right there and he's hinging it. Now we've made this a six on six game and we're going to make this guy wrong no matter what. All right, so there's one way to equate numbers. The other way is just really the textbook zone replay where we put the back on one side, where we put the back on one side, we arc that guy, we zone this way, now we go that way, and now let's X this guy out. Whoops, didn't want to do that. We X this guy out, we bring the back in front, now the quarterback's gonna hand the ball off if that guy squeezes too hard. Now the quarterback comes back around. You know, you can do that kind of stuff and still throw the RPO if they wanna play one-on-one -on -one with CJ Johnson outside. So two things you have to look for to attack man coverage this week, primarily is running the football. Can the quarterback get involved in the run and attacking the back when he gets those matchup on inside linebackers and pass coverage. And then the final thing is obviously taking your one-on-one -on -one shots outside to guys like C.J. Johnson. And uh, Georgia Tech had a lot of success with the, with the mesh combination with crossing guys over the top in the same way Lincoln Riley used to do against primarily man coverage teams. So quarterback run game, running back catching balls out of the backfield, crossing routes, C.J. Johnson over the top. That's the method for East Carolina to score points this weekend.